Ladies and gentlemen and everybody in between, welcome to Overanalyze Adventures, the show where I overanalyze adventure games because I find it to be fun. And what I have for you on this show is a brand spank. New. I'm talking about this game. Came out the same day I'm doing this recording type of brand spanking new point and click 3D made in Unity adventure game called Tales from Dunswick by Isodic Games. I'm gonna say that's right. I don't know for sure though. Either way, as I said at the time of this recording, this game just came out. And it's episode one of a four episode, at least four episode planned series of Lovecraftian horror point and click adventure games made again by Iosotic. And oh boy, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between, let's just cut to the chase and start over analyzing episode one right now. Yes, put aside any doubt, folks, this game was indeed powered by Unity. And once you make your way to the main menu screen, you'll notice that there's an option button that you can click on. And if you're anything like me, you'll click on it and notice that you really do don't have any options in this game. In fact, all you can do is adjust the sound volumes of the music, the sound effects, and the speech. And what's actually pretty interesting about the speech volume is that it's more or less completely unnecessary because there's no spoken dialogue anywhere in this game. So maybe there's some plans for it in the future, or maybe my game's messed up. Who knows? But what I do know is I'm going to hit the new game button and, well, actually get into the game. Oh boy, what a spooky intro that was. Now I'm going to assume that you're able to read English because I'm not going to read you all the stuff in this game. But nevertheless, I'll give you the short of it. Basically, the character hasn't seen his father in years. Not since he was sent away as a child anyway, because he was a detective, so for some reason... Detectives have to send their children away. What a bizarre thing. Doesn't really say where he was or who raised him. But nevertheless, he got a letter from his daddy to go back home to Dunwick. Although I'm probably going to call it Dunswick a few more times because it just sounds like a real place. Oh, right. We get a nice slow fade in and wait a minute. I know that car. That car is in the Unity Asset Store. It's made by Unity. Now... I'm not saying that using assets on the asset store is a bad thing. In fact, it can be a completely sensible thing to do. Iosotic, they're an indie developer. It can be really expensive and time-consuming to make models and animation on your own. So the asset store is there to fill the void of talent or time. There's really nothing wrong with it. But at the same time, I do feel compelled to point it out because... If you spend any time at the asset store, you may notice some of the props and models used in this game. And Nehut, with that said, we get our first quest for the game. Now, it might not be obvious, but if you ever played an adventure game before, you should notice signposting when you see it. This car right here has no gas, and we need to get some, because this is a horror game. And like in all horror, people do not... Read gas gauges, even though they glow in the dark and sometimes make noises when you're low on gas. But yeah, our hero here, his car ran out of gas. He needs to find some in the middle of this scary darkened woods because, well, it's a horror game. Of course he's traveling at night. Who travels during broad daylight? Goodness gracious. What are you thinking? If you're thinking you'll have something to stimulate you, you won't. You'll walk past some rather familiar assets and then eventually make your way to a gas station that's in a rather distressed state. And again, because this game is a horror game, everything has to be distressed and black and spooky because it's horror, folks. They're trying to build atmosphere here. And naturally, nothing works because this place is dilapidated. What did you expect? Well, if you expected to find a hose in the dumpster, you were right, because you need that to solve a puzzle, eventually. But eventually, too, you will make your way to this house, which you have to make your way to. This game is really linear, let me say that. There's not much exploration here. Granted, you really don't expect a whole lot of exploration in an adventure game, but this is practically an adventure game on rails. Mayhoot, we make our way to the house, and yeah, it's spooky. It's boarded up. It's horrific, I guess. 
if distressed houses make you sad and scared. But if you bother to check out the doghouse, you'll find a key to the door that looks like it would be really easy just to break into. Like, is there even glass in the door anymore? But nevertheless, you have to do this, even though it's kind of confusing. Sam's looking for gas. Why is he breaking into a house? Well, he's breaking into the house because there's nothing else you can do. So, I guess you're making lemons out of lemonade. No gas? Break into a house and try to steal the copper wire. So we make our way into the house and find all kinds of spooky things. Like really worn out blocks. And a broken TV. And a picture of a lady whose face has been blackened out. Admittedly, it is rather unnerving to hear crying in the background while you're trying to explore this house. What's also a bit strange, too, is that you'll find a postcard written to our hero Sam here. It doesn't really say much, but it's kind of strange. How did the person who wrote this postcard know that Sam was going to break into this house? And more importantly, the only reason why Sam is here is because he's incompetent and ran out of gas. So, did the person writing this postcard know that he was going to run out of gas? Did he sabotage his car? And these are interesting questions that will have to be saved for later because we gotta go upstairs. Now, I haven't talked about the camera yet, and I should talk about it now. Basically, this game uses a Resident Evil alone in the dark fixed camera style that for the most part works pretty well. But it also sometimes doesn't give you the full view, if you will. Like, it's not clear where you can go and where you can't. What's an invisible wall and what's the exit? But for the most part, it's nice and it looks like some care has gone into the angles and all that. After you examine what appears to be some homage to rear window, you hear a noise. And then you go downstairs and open a door that was locked. I guess you solve the puzzle of the locked kitchen door by going up the stairs. Now that's pretty clever. Yeah, Sam seems to be taking this whole situation really well. Maybe he's stoned out of his gorge, but there's really no reaction to any of the horror here. I suppose that's kind of nice, but at the same time, this is a third-person adventure game. You're allowed to develop your character a little bit and have them react to the world around them. Yeah, it looks like some messed up stuff happened here, but... Again, Sam doesn't seem bothered by it at all. Maybe this is just a normal Wednesday afternoon for him. But let's get real here. This is supposed to be a horror game. I know they're trying to build atmosphere and tension and all of that, but this just seems kind of funny, actually. Yeah, it's a Shining-style murder room with blood everywhere, but come on, it, it seems silly to me. And what also seems even more silly is that there's a gas can in this room room. After all, who doesn't keep their empty gas cans in their murder room? And then, with the gas tank in hand, you can, as bold as brass, go back to the gas station and siphon gas out of an old car. Now, I'm pretty sure the gas in this car probably wouldn't work, but it doesn't matter, because this isn't reality. Anywho, Sam fills up the gas from the old car into his old car and drives to his father's office. And no, he doesn't call anyone about the murder room or seem all that bothered by it. Now, I know it sounds like I'm playing this game at a breakneck pace and really overlooking a bunch of stuff, but I assure you, I'm not. This game's kind of thin on content for the first act, if you will. There's not much really going on here. All you have to do is go to the spooky house and get the gas tank in the spooky room, go get the hose out of the dumpster, get the gas out of the car, and drive away. Everything else that you see here is just kind of filler and, I guess, atmosphere building, but it's not really relevant or even all that interactable. But anyway, we're in Sam's father's office. And oh boy, there's some scaling issues here. Yeah, what's up with that water cooler there? Is it a water cooler for tiny people? Well, what's also tiny in this room is the content. There's absolutely nothing the do do in here except click on this notebook here and then magically sam knows where he needs to go next in order to find his daddy because that's what this game's about apparently now it's about finding sam's dearest papa that may be why they released it on father's day and also i want to point out too that on his father's desk uh, there's a cell phone there now, why Sam doesn't take this opportunity to call the authorities about the murder room is some more gross negligence on his part. But then again, 
Maybe I shouldn't put much faith in Sam. After all, the fool cannot read a gas gauge. But he can magically deduce where his father is. And that's where we're going. Because, well, there's absolutely nothing else to do here. There's no items to pick up. There's only four things to click on. This room simply exists to be a bridge between the spooky outside and the spooky mansion that we're inevitably going to. I guess you can say maybe this place exists for world building, but it seems kind of pointless to me. Oh well, after you head on out, you get some more story. Blah blah blah, it was a dark and stormy night, and we ended up in a rundown, dilapidated mansion that seems like it's not very structurally sound. But I guess someone lives here. At this point, I'm just assuming Sam's some sort of idiot savant. Really? That's the one thing he questions about this house. Their choice of pictures. Not everything else. Okay, he's shocked the phone doesn't work. Does he need a phone? Because there's a phone back at his daddy's office that he could have used. Again, idiot savant. But anyway, we gotta take our dearest boy Sam here across the mansion until eventually he ends up here. Where there's a note. Because just like in the real world, people write down their innermost thoughts and then just randomly leave them around places. Yeah, that lovely silence of obvious voiceover spot that doesn't have a voiceover in it. Maybe they're planning on putting them in, or maybe they planned on it. I don't know. But what I do know is a bunch of people were invited here. So, is this recent? Why would people come here? I guess this dude's rich who owns this mansion we're in. But if he's rich, why doesn't he fix up this place? This place looks abandoned and run down. But no, people are hanging out here. Lighting candles, having dinner parties, and being paid lots of money. Who the hell would believe that a person living in this house has any money? Oh well. Okay, maybe this place did look better back when they had this dinner party. But since then, this place has fallen into some dire straits. And surely this note would have fallen into the same straits and have faded away. I don't know, maybe I'm just a bit confused about the whole timeline of events here. Alright, with my confusion out of the way, Sam makes his way to the kitchen where he discovers something. And his reaction, well, let it speak for itself. Sam reacts like he found the plate of moldy bread or something. This is his reaction to finding a severed hand in a refrigerator. Oh god. Oh wait a minute, there's a key! What's wrong with this man? First the murder room, now the severed hand in the fridge. That dude is completely lackadaisical about horrific things. He does not seem like an appropriate horror protagonist. He seems too well adjusted to murdery horrific things. Anyway, would you believe it that that key unlocks a door that was previously locked? Oh wow, such amazement and wonderment. What's also amazing too are all these long hallways. I get the impression that this is just a single wide house that's incredibly long. Oh no, this is so foreboding. And it still makes me wonder, why is someone leaving postcards for Sam everywhere? I guess it's spooky and creepy, but at the same time it's like, Okay, Sam, maybe you should leave this place. Screw your dad. He apparently was a deadbeat anyway. He abandoned you or sent you to live somewhere else anyway because he was a detective, so oh, what's up with this attachment? Actually, now that I think about it, I know nothing about this character. How old he is, what his relationships are, what he does for a living... I mean, he's just basically a really blank canvas that's completely unimpressed with murder rooms and severed hands. Oh, right, yeah, we found a piece of string. Now I can explain this puzzle design. Actually, you know what? I don't think that's necessary. Tales of Dunwick basically has the same puzzle in it, although slightly changed. Essentially, something is locked. Then you have to find the right item to unlock it. I mean, the biggest, most intricate puzzle, at least in this part of the game, is finding string and finding a hook to fish out a key. And as I said earlier, this game is practically on rails. Short of just simply not clicking on hotspots, 
You're not going to miss the items you need here. This is a really easy game. That's what I'm trying to get at. It's not a fault. It's just, it's easy. And there's not much puzzle variety here. And as I say, variety is a spice of life. Oh well, let's unlock this door and see what horrific things lie within that Sam won't really react to. Yeah, you find another kind of creepy murdery room that Sam doesn't have much of a reaction to. There's some numbers on this murder practice mannequin that's actually useful because it unlocks a safe. Again, we need something to unlock something. This is the MO of this game, along with Sam's non-reactions to anything weird. All right, how does he know that? I'm serious, this whole scene had me deeply questioning this game. Is there some content they cut out? Because really, how the hell does Sam know that he needs to hide here? There's like a vague noise. Ooh, it sounds sinister. But still, how does he know he needs to hide? You know, Sam, for the first time, I actually agree with you. What the hell was that? That was completely out of left field. I guess we now have a foe. A dude with a meat cleaver who is terribly malnourished. Okay, you'd think, like any sane person, Sam would leave. But no, I guess he's still motivated to find his father. Although he hasn't really mentioned it at all. Other than what he said in the office. Yeah, again, this character's motivations for anything he's doing is completely non-existent. And remains unexplained. Other than it needs to be done to progress the game. And what wafer-thin plot it has. So, with the numbers you get, you unlock a safe and you find a single bolt and a wrench and with this wrench you unlock a locked fireplace why you ask <laughs> why would you ask that you have nothing else to do this is a linear adventure game with not much of a plot or really any reasoning behind any of the actions that sam's doing and there is some spooky stuff written over here that's well foreshadowing but frankly we're here at the end of the game so there's no need to foreshadow anymore we're going to see the shadow so now sam's in a mysterious and sinister cave why you ask again i don't know he's just here because this is where the game wants him to be so you wander down some more cave things that are very reminiscent of all the halls you have to wander down in the mansion and don't oh boy some corpses oh dear but hey one of them has a gun beside him so maybe sam can take the easy way out oh wait can't because when he tries to leave <gasps> The malnourished man with the meat cleavers there. Oh no, what will Sam do? Well, it's pretty obvious. He loads the gun and he shoots him. And then some boulders fall down that appear to have no mass at all. And then, for the first and only time in this game, we get some speech. The old ones were, the old ones are, and the old ones shall be. Not in the spaces we know. But between them, they walk serene and primal, undimensioned, and to us, unseen. The end roll credits. Oh my goodness, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between. May Satan have mercy on my soul. That was an incredibly short adventure game. I clocked it in. I kid you not. The first time, blind first playthrough, took me 38 minutes to beat this game. Oh my goodness. Now I'm going to be real here. I'm going to be as honest as I can be. And I've never been one to mince words, and I'm not about to start now. But I don't know what to make of this game. 
I understand it is episode one of a four-part series, but my god, if this is the introduction, it's not doing itself any favors. There's really not much of a plot here. The character is completely underdeveloped, and there's not much of anything to do here. It kind of reminds me of, like, the Nanny Knights version of an adventure game. Yeah, sure, it works, but this is kind of dull. There's not much happening here. Sure, there's some atmosphere and the camera angles look cool. And the models are pretty nice. But, yeah, there's just not much content here. So that's really all I can say. Constructive criticism? You gotta have more character, man. Sam's just nothing. And you have to have more plot. It's kind of almost feels like an early access game that needs to have some more meat on its bones. Some more development. It needs puzzles. It needs some motivation for why Sam is doing what he's doing. It's just blatantly transparent that the game is set up to progress itself. There's no narrative glue holding it together. There's no reason. There's no rhyme. There's no logic. It's really disappointing. Maybe episode two will be better. Or maybe it won't be. I don't know. But what I do know is that does it for Overanalyzed Adventures. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.